So without further ado, again, my name is Elisa Charters. I am the president of LACU. And fundamentally, um, you know, it's it's been a complete honor to serve LACU. I've been serving LACU in different positions since 2015. I was the mentorship co-chair before I became president. Um, and we've hosted so many events, uh, including El, El Regreso, which many of you may have participated in. And, you know, through the years, we try to offer a lot of different activities so that our alumni can have fun, can network, can make some meaningful connections, both personally and professionally, uh, you know, lead efforts for our scholarship funds. And uh, we'll, our, our leaders will talk a little bit more about those in detail as we, as we go communicating, getting out there, get the messaging. Hopefully you're all receiving this messaging as you sign up as, as members. And, um, and, and basically to ensure that we're upholding our bylaws, we're upholding our goals as a Latinx community, uh, as a Columbia community, and supporting CAA and our fellow SIGs, shared interest groups as well. So we do a lot of activities as LACU, and we do a lot of activities uh, in tandem with our shared interest groups, all with support under the umbrella of the, the uh, Columbia Alumni Association. So in terms of my uh, responsibilities as president, um, per the bylaws specifically, uh, my responsibility is as a president is to convene the meetings, ensure that they're happening, communicate often with our secretary, uh, again, who is Yesenia Miranda, um, representing LACU internally and externally on uh, you know, any kinds of communications, if there's specific interest in partnering from an external organization or an individual or a company or, or a government entity. Um, that would get cleared through the president first. And I would share that information with our leadership team or executive leadership team. Um, communications, reviewing the communications, making sure everything's getting out clearly in terms of what our goals are again. Um, and, you know, making sure that the actions that we take are specifically in alignment with our bylaws. It's very important to note that LACU operates, although we do not have our own 501c3 tax exempt nonprofit status, we do operate as a nonprofit entity. So staying in alignment with our bylaws and also with rules and regulations of nonprofits under the umbrella of the Columbia Alumni Association, we do not engage in political activities um, nor does anyone financially benefit, nor do the companies they work for or the external organizations they work for benefit through the membership of LACU. That does not mean we don't partner actively with um, different entities externally, maybe even other Ivy League schools on events, but um, it's, it's very clear that uh, you know what we do is really to serve our alumni community, our student community, um, and we really, our goal is really to achieve engagement. So I think that that is pretty much um, what the formal responsibilities of president are. So I will now pass the torch to our VP, Carlos uh, Victor Cruz. Hello everyone, welcome. Glad to see so many new faces. Um, I've been involved with LACU for about, I am a Columbia College graduate from 1988. Um, and I've been involved with LACU for about, I think it's 2012 in some capacity, some more structured, some less structured, but um, it, it has been an honor to be involved. Um, I am a firm believer in you have to be in it to win it. So um, in order to see growth in my communities, um, in my communities that I'm part of, the smaller communities and the larger Columbia College, Columbia, larger Columbia community, um, you know, I believe that you have to be engaged in any way possible to see the changes that you want to see. 
Um, so that's why I've been involved. Um, you are going to receive um, a description of the ballots if you're on our mailing list tomorrow, which will have the formal uh, description of what a VP does. Um, I would say you basically are the um, support to the president. Um, these are all volunteer roles. We all have professional lives. Um, some of us have more personal lives than others, but we have other things that take up some time in our lives. So there might be times when the president um, is a little consumed with other things. So you have to step up and sort of lead, lead the organization, um, help lead the organization as well. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Um, I, I think the most important role as VP is to align with the president, make sure that your strategies are occurring and occurring in a timely manner and that basically you're building community in any way shape or form um, and also checking when with the other board members um, some other board other board members aren't as familiar with the workings of columbia workings of the organization um, so you have to you're sort of a mentor to them to make sure that they are um, achieving what they want to achieve um, and um, I also want to point out that Rebecca Castillo is on the call as well, and she was one of the founders. So if anybody has any questions about the true history of the organization, um, please feel free to ask her. I'm sure she'll be happy to answer. Um, and again, thank you for being involved. Um, and I think there's always, always there's already a question in the chat. Um, the other thing I do want to point out is that um, there is our email is basically published everywhere. So if you have any questions after this event, please feel free to to ask it. Thank you, Carlos. And you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, this is a volunteer effort. It's a collaborative effort. We support each other tremendously across our lean team. And, uh, you know, if one link is weak, the other helps out. And we, we, um, we really have to effectuate our goals by supporting each other fully and wholeheartedly. And I would also say, I, I uh, regret, I didn't, explain you know about how many hours um, of volunteer time on average this takes weekly and I would say on average it's about four or five hours um, in, a, in a given week just with communications um, not just among the leadership team but for events following up with CAA following up with our shared interest groups um, and then any other uh, activity that winds up happening uh, with communications or other events, whether they're on campus or virtually, or if there's special events happening in the world that we're trying to address to support our community. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Sometimes there are more hours than, than four to five hours a week, but um, that's effectively what, what the commitment is for the role of president. Um, I would ask uh, Ivan Lineski to, uh, to present now. Sure. Uh, nice to meet everyone. Um, I'm a class of 16 uh, from the college uh, and now I'm in uh, business school. Um, for treasurer, I would say it's probably a bit less than four or five hours. It's probably somewhere in the kind of two, two hours a week range. Um, the main, the main things are to one, managing the kind of internal funds of the club. Um, and then be uh, kind of working with the development chair to fundraise. Uh, I would say the the second uh, the kind of second goal is the the most time consuming. Fundraising is kind of the name of the game, as everyone knows. Um, so kind of making sure that you know we're we're keeping track of all of it. Uh, kind of work picks up around Giving Day, I would say. So it's a little kind of feast or famine around Giving Day. Uh, we we have kind of Columbia staff that helps um, with a lot of the kind of communications. And so it's, it's not like you're doing it by yourself. Um, but the, the main thing is kind of making sure that you're engaging alumni, that you're sending out the right communications. Um, it's always a fine line between too little and too much, kind of making those types of judgment calls um, and, be, and being creative around, you know, how you're communicating and how you're engaging um, kind of p potential uh, donors. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Ivan. Um, and, you know, again, 
the role of treasurer is uh, is critical to LACU, especially given that we take very seriously the development of our LACU scholarship fund and, um, and also our C scholarship fund, which uh, Yesenia has really put a lot of effort into launching. Um, Ivan has really done amazing things with the progress of the LACU scholarship fund in the last several years. And uh, you should be getting those communications regularly, but uh, we really applaud um, you know, our whole team and, and Ivan leading this effort. And I also want to say all that Rebecca has been tremendously supportive to us um, and will be continuing to be supportive of us in this nominations and elections process. So we are eternally grateful for her role on the advisory board. Okay, and so um, I'm going to ask Yesenia Miranda, who's uh, our secretary. She keeps us in alignment and we're so grateful for that. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jesenia Miranda, and as Lisa mentioned, I am the secretary. Um, I've been part of LACU, I, I think around the, starting around the same time as Elisa did in uh, 2015 as a board member, but um, an active, uh, I guess, general body member before then. Um, and so as secretary, I would say my main responsibilities have been um, as, as it says in the description, um, taking down the minutes, um, making sure that um, I maintain that documentation, also disseminate um, minutes and um, a, a little bit of project management too, um, in terms of like making sure that um, deadlines are highlighted at a cadence that can keep things running. And, um, and just making sure that, you know, things are organized and, um, um, providing any uh, further information um, that might require referencing the minutes in order to support the momentum behind um, the different activities that we um, uh, support. So I, I think that's most of it. Um, so I might, might hand the mic to Jonathan. Thanks, Yesenia. Um... Welcome everybody. Uh, and excuse me if you hear noises in the background of my, my dogs, I won't go anywhere right now. Um, I'm the communications chair, I'm Columbia College class of 2007. Um, I believe it's been about three years in this position now. Um, so it, it's been some time. The communications chair, uh, you'll see from the, the, and you'll hear more, um, it may change a bit or it will be changing a bit potentially. Uh, but it, it does involve, as it, as it sounds, communicating with the, the base in both email form, um, social media form, the website, making sure that I can assist in whatever way with uh, the other initiatives from the other team members and be able to support that. Um, I think both um, Carlos and Lisa really hit it perfectly when they talked about the the weak links you know social media is not one of my strengths and it wasn't one of my strengths coming in and you know there's an awesome team and Carl has been incredible supportive in terms of uh, taking a lot of that that extra load and helping out when when I couldn't so it, it is definitely a a team effort in all the positions you'll be the leader in positions but you'll get assistance from all over the place and be able to pull resources and pull information so um, really excited for for those that want to partake, um, and ideally, you know, be working with you soon. John, that's a perfect lead-in to our newly updated bylaws. Um, John, you know, a lot of a lot of um, pressure was on John because, as we all know, communications five years ago was completely different than what communications is today. There are so many components of communications with social media, with, with all the various platforms, whether, whether you know, there's so many different uh, um, social media platforms. There, there are different cultures on, on social media platforms in the sense that, you know, LinkedIn is more business focused. Instagram is about, you know, getting the word out. Facebook might have a little bit more information about, you know, what's happening in the world. So addressing all of these um, platforms is, is takes a lot of um, 
time and effort and also the communications that we want to uh, send out on behalf of who um, really have to have full buy-in by our whole team with all the different perspectives of what we're trying to communicate, as well as whatever campaigns CAA is, is uh, um, driving as, and our shared interest groups. So uh, the communications position is, uh, I would say, one of our most important positions. And uh, I think that you know, to think that just one person can do it all, that's that's not really fair, um, nor is it effective. So as John mentioned, it was, it was really great that our team could come together. And I would say any new leadership team is going to be expected to work together as well to be effective in those communication um, plans, that outreach, those strategies, um, and, and, and making sure that we're getting the most amount of outreach and get, giving the most amount of support to, to our alumni students and the Columbia community. Um, so I'd like to roll into the, the bylaws just to highlight you know, how the bylaws are now changing some of the positions. Um, and if Jenna, if that's possible to share some of these, that would be great. Okay, so Obviously, those are redline versions, so you can see what the, the updated changes are. And yeah, so president we reviewed, vice president, um, secretary. Now, secretary's position is also going to be, while, while the secretary position is still going to um, be responsible for all of the things that Yesenia highlighted, um, having a secretary that's also managing membership is too cumbersome now, especially now that our membership is, is you know, in the thousands. So we are now seeking to um, create a membership chair position that would report to the secretary. Um, and as it says here, uh, well, actually it says a little bit lower uh, what, the, what the membership chair's responsibilities are. Thank you, section nine. So the membership chair shall oversee the membership committee um, and shall support the executive board secretary and assume the principal responsibility for promoting membership in LACU to all alumni and maintain the official role of LACU members. Um, and just making sure that uh, only active alumni members participate in voting uh, at all membership meetings. I just wanna highlight that with the pandemic, it's been, an, you know, an incredibly tough year. So typically active members are differentiated because they're paying their dues. But um, at this point in time, we have made a decision that we would just want participation and we don't want to um, pressure our LACU, any LACU members at this point, given the circumstances of the pandemic to ensure participation or support um, you know, whatever the needs are for our, our membership uh, community. Okay, so I think we can go back up. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the next position was treasurer. Um, and I, I think after this, Ivan and Yesenia will talk a little bit about the scholarship funds in detail. Um, but basically, um, the treasurer uh, basically has the responsibility of both the treasurer and finance chair positions. So um, it's a little bit detailed here. I did mention, you know, the 501c3 status. Since we don't have it right now, we're under the umbrella of CAA's nonprofit status. But if at some point in the future there's fundraising, that would have to be worked out via the, the treasurer and finance chair's role. Okay, I think we can go to the next one. Okay, development chair. Um, we do have a development chair position. Uh, unfortunately, that person had to relinquish uh, the position because um, she was uh, a development person professionally and um, there were some challenges there. So our vice president, Carlos, actually took on some of that role and so did, did uh, Yesenia our secretary and um, Ivan, our treasurer. So 
we still have been able to do a phenomenal job even with our lean team. And that goes back to supporting each other and working as a team. Very proud of, of our efforts over the last several years. Okay, again, to community care, which John was talking about, we are, we've decided that it's best to now split the roles. While communication chair has the ultimate authority in communications, um, we have split the social media chair position out so that we can have two people managing this workload uh, to be more effective and to be fair, quite frankly, given we're all volunteers. Uh, so it's pretty clear, basically, the communications chair is going to be in charge of the strategies, the newsletter, and the website, whereas the social media chair will be in charge of the social media strategies and, and the social media platforms. Okay, we can go to the next one. Okay, student relations chair. We've um, had a student relations chair over the years. Um, our our, our last student relations chair had to move and uh, had some work conflicts. Um, but basically, this is a very important position because we always want to maintain connectivity between our uh, alumni and our students and making sure that we're supporting student needs and bringing our expertise, whether it's professionally, culturally, um, financially, whatever uh, the needs are, whatever the circumstances are for the pandemic, there were some specific situations that arose. Um, having those communications is, is essential. I wanna commend John because he really took on the, the lead of that position while managing communications. He did a lot of that outreach. Carlos also did as well. Um, and uh, it really helped, um, you know, maintain momentum, maintain this service uh, for that connectivity. The events chair. So in the past, um, LACU had one events chair and really the main focus of that events chair was to host El Regreso. Um, but given the, just the, the way that things have organically developed over the last few years where we've been offering more and more events, smaller events, more opportunities for um, alumni across the nation in the world somewhere else to participate. And so we're realizing that with, especially with what happened with the pandemic, we've, you know, we've had to offer other events. Um, and per the bylaws, we have certain milestone markers, timeline markers that require um, El Regreso to happen or a similar event to happen. It's also a celebratory event. So we really want that event to happen and it's very meaningful and it takes a lot of energy to put that kind of event together. So we've decided to split the role um, and in our past um, uh, Regreso, uh, Irene Colado, she, she acted as our El Regreso committee chair and she did a wonderful job and we had a wonderful event. Um, in the past, we've done it in low library, um, but this time we did it in the School of Journalism. It was a beautiful event. It was well received. There was great participation. Um, and I think this just exemplifies where we need to go so that we can manage these events. So they're not necessarily as grand, but they are still super high quality events where we have connectivity and, and high quality networking. Okay, um, I think that's it in terms of the new positions and, and what, we've, uh, what we've changed to date. Is, does anyone on the leadership team wanna add anything else that I may have not covered? Okay, all right, so I think we can now move on to um, our LACU and C's scholarship work. Uh, and I'd ask Ivan to talk a little bit about the progress we've made. And then I wanna have Yesenia talk about the exciting new uh, happenings with the C's scholarship. Yeah, uh, I'll bury the lead of the, the C scholarship because that's definitely the biggest development um, that's going to be starting next year, uh, or I guess this this fiscal or this fiscal year. 
Um, but the Laku scholarship, uh, it's definitely up to this day, our biggest uh, kind of focus. Uh, it's a scholarship that goes to you know, uh, two students that are kind of focused on or are, are considered leaders in the Latino community on campus, specifically in the college. Um, so it is an undergrad scholarship for the Columbia College. Uh, we pretty much have break, broken records every year. Um, the last five years, uh, I want to say it's around tripled in size uh, for kind of fundraising, um, which is good because that means we can we can support more students and uh, give a bigger scholarship. Um, so that's definitely been our, our biggest focus. Uh, so all the kind of all our, and I forgot to mention this earlier, that all our focus as far as fundraising is for that LECU scholarship. Um, and now we'll, you know, we'll add the C's uh, scholarship to our kind of repertoire, but uh, that, that's, you know, we're not like fundraising for um, kind of the university or the college as a whole. Well, obviously tangentially we are, but the, the scholarship is kind of our, our focus, the LECU scholarship. So um, just to follow up in terms of the C's LACU scholarship, uh, it's an effort that we kicked off last week, uh, last year in conjunction with the um, giving office of C's. And um, while it, it hasn't been officially rolled out or, or publicized, we are still um, ironing out a lot of the details and the rollout strategy, but it's, um, it's, it's an exciting um an exciting outcome of, of a lot of work that the, the board put in to um, make sure that um, LACU is not only representing the college, but also um, sees in, in this capacity. So. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks, Yesenia. And again, couldn't be more proud of this team and the efforts that, and, and the dedication and you know pushing the envelope to ensure that our Latinx community is getting what it needs in, in terms of financial support. Um, I do want to take a moment here to also recognize that Carlos Cuevas is also on the line. And Carlos has been a tremendous beacon, um, has been a tremendous supporter uh, in his role to me as an as someone on our advisory board um, with his expertise, with his um, help in organization, helping me to be organized, helping me to drive you know, our, our team towards our goals. Uh, and I would love to invite him to say a few words if he is willing to. Um, Carlos, can you uh, hear me? Yes, I, I, I can hear you. Uh, I am here, but I am like, on the road, but don't worry, I pulled off to, to the side just in, in, in transit, but really excited to be here with you tonight. Um, I recognize a lot of the faces and names uh, you know, tied to tonight, and I'm really glad that everyone is on here, as well as to the former leaders and, and current leaders of, of LACU. You know, we are our community. Um, so many people have been there for us. Um, and so many people, you know, need us to be there for them um, as we grow in prominence on our community. Uh, I've been a member of LACU for um, around a, a decade now. I am a 2005 graduate of, of the college. But um, LACU is really the organization that got me involved in, uh, in Columbia and the Columbia alumni community. Uh, there is a wealth of special interest groups um, that we are a strong community and, and a proud member of, um, but this is also an opportunity for us to get involved in the college, as well as the larger Columbia Alumni Association and build ties with our various schools. You know, our president is a SIPA uh, alum. Uh, you will see we have diverse representation from all over the country, all of our different schools, um, and so if you are interested at, at all there, it, you know, we're here for, for you. Uh, we're here to answer any of our questions, but you know, really we can teach you what, what, what you need. Uh, don't worry about what we're really looking for. And obviously if you're joining us tonight, there's, you know, genuine interest. And that's really um, what's gonna make the foundation of our next uh, executive board great. So thanks for, uh, for highlighting me and uh, happy to be with you.
tonight. Thank you so much, Carlos. And thank you for all of your support over these last several years. I also want to just take a moment to ask Rebecca, as one of our founders, to share some of her insights um, you know, per, per the volunteerism and, and the leadership from her perspective. Um, what, why I put so much time and effort into LACU was um, coming to Colombia was the first time that I actually learned what it was to be Latina. Um, grew up very American, but when I came, I had the Mexican face and it was great to, to find out who I was. Um, one, of, one of the people that, that helped me was uh, someone who was three years older and he was, just, he was just like, look to your family, look to people you know who you grew up and that was Latinos. And LACU has continuously given me that, that um, family. I mean, all my family is in Texas and I'm in New York and I'm always craving to be around people from Colombia who grew up with our experience and are trying to lay the path for people coming up behind us. And that was the whole reasoning for us to do the, um, to create the organization. And we become a, a, a bigger force when we have more collective voices talking as one. And that's what LACU can do. Um, the other thing is, it's, it's great to see when we get together the power we have and in the projects we do. And just, just it, it warms my heart to hear about the scholarships because that was one of the things we really tried getting off the first five years. And we just, we needed to organize ourselves as a family first and get our house in order. And we did, and you guys have taken the torch and gone further. And now that we've done this, I'm excited to see, well, what's our next level? What do we have to do? And that's what this next leadership is gonna do is gonna take us to that that next level, but is gonna have the support of all of us who've been there before. And that's what we need to just hammer in that you're not gonna be alone. You just have to put up the, the flare and we will all be there with emails, with, with social media, with direct messaging, with e you know phone calls, anything. We will be there to help you. I, I will always make myself available to LACU. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And, you know, again, I just want to circle back. We are so excited for all of you to, you know, who have expressed interest in learning more, to get involved, uh, to take on leadership roles. Um, I would highly, highly recommend that you review the bylaws um, before you nominate someone or, or if you do nominate someone, please ask them to read the bylaws so that they understand what the commitment is. Um, I will say from the several years of experience that, that I've been serving that, you know, if someone runs for a position, wins the election for that position, and then within two or three months decides, oh, I just, I just really can't do this. It's, it's not what, what I thought it was gonna be. It, it is to the detriment of the whole, it's to the detriment of our community. So you really wanna take this seriously. And um, we, we have a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. We have a great amount of fun, um, but but it this is leadership. This is volunteerism, this is leadership. And there are others depending on you. This is a team effort. So it just makes it harder for the team if you're not two feet in when you know, you're thinking about doing this. So please, please make sure you are ready. And if you're not, that's okay too. We still encourage you to participate. You can jump on a committee. You can learn the ropes that way. We can teach you about an area that you don't know anything about, um, or you can help in an area that you're an expert in. So um, again, we're, we're thrilled for your participation here today. And I think at this point, we can move on to uh, some questions. Um, I'll be first, can I, I, I think for Kelly one second? I think Kelly had his hand up, oh, Kelly Rodriguez. Sorry, can I just jump in for one quick second before we, we move to questions? Um, I just want to introduce myself. I've been kind of hidden on the call, but my name is Jenna Farley Fleming, um, and I am the uh, CAA liaison to all of our shared interest groups. So I work extremely closely with the the boards of all of our shared interest groups, including, of course, um, Baku. Um, so I just wanted to add to what all of the current members, board members have said, um, is that 
our boards, at, at least I like to think, have um, a lot of support from our staff as well. And we really, um, I'll speak for myself, um, really see ourselves as part of the team um, and are eager to, especially folks who have not been part of the group before, you know, part of a CAA leadership team before. Um, we're so excited to get new folks involved, new perspectives, new ideas. Um, and if anybody has any questions and kind of wants um, to learn more about what about the CAA, about 